Good day, I am Cadet Lexi and I will discuss about the IMBSC and including safety rules and regulations, equipment and operations and instruction and stewage limitation. International Maritime Solid Bulk Cargo, which is IMSPC, the International Convention for the Safety of Life at Sea, 1974, Solas Convention, as amended deals with the various aspects of maritime, for which is safety and contains. And in Chapter 6, the mandatory provisions governing the carriage of the solid bulk cargoes. These provisions are extended in the International Maritime Solid Bulk Cargoes, which is the code is IMSBC code. And the primary aim of the International Maritime Solid Bulk Cargoes code, uh, IMSBC code, which replaces the code of the safe practice for solid bulk, so that they can facilitate the safety of the stowage and shipment of the so solid bulk and by providing information on the dangers associated they with the shipment of the certain types of solid bulk cargoes which is uh, some instruction on the procedures to be adapted when the shipment of solid bulk cargoes is contemplated and the prime hazards associated with the shipment of the solid bulk cargoes are those relating to structural damage due. Yes, some of the cargoes cause um, improper distribution or loss or reduction disability during the voyage and chemical reaction of cargo. Then, therefore, the primary aim of the IMSBC code is to facilitate the safe stowage and the shipment of some solid bar cargos when providing information on the dangers associated with the shipment of certain types of solid bulk cargos and instructions on the procedures they can adapt when the shipment of the solid bulk cargos is contemplated observance of the code harmonies the practices and procedures to be followed and up appropriate the precautions to be taken in the loading and some trimming and also carriage and discharge of the solid bulk cargoes when transported by by an uh, as the in the sea and ensuring compliance with the mandatory provisions of the solas convention and the uh, i am uh, SBC code was adopted on December 4, 2008 by Resolution MSE.268 and entered into force on January 1, 2011 and which is the date it was made mandatory under the provisions of the Solas Convention. Since then, the code has been amended. It is worth nothing that the IMSBC code does, but not cover the carriage of green in bulk. The specific requirements for the transport for green and covered by the international code for safe carriage of green in bulk. And you must also make sure that cargoes are properly distributed throughout the ship's holds to provide an adequate stability and to be ensured that the ship's structure is never overstressed of course and information can be found in the ship's stability information like booklet or you can use loading calculators etc and if they are available and the master will need to calculate the stability for the anticipated worst like conditions we and uh, during the voyage as well as for departure and demonstrate the stability is adequate.
before load uh, and also before loading or unloading the master and the terminal representative must agree our loading plan to ensure that the permissible force and moments on the ship are not exceeded and what this plan should include is detailed in by the code of the practice for the safe loading and unloading of bulk cars and the ability of hook code in the checklist on page 16. Good day, I'm Kadip Itoriaga and I'll be discussing to you about the following cargo conditions and its effect with respect to the seaworthiness and stability of the ship in terms of the angle of repose cargos which may liquefy flow moisture point flow state transportable moisture limit temperature toxic gases oxygen depletion and humidity monitoring ventilation so in my discussion, I will be sharing to you the knowledge and understanding about the condition of the vessel in bulk terms of angle repose, the list in terms of the vessel during the loading, especially the ventilation in the cargo which may liquefy. The angle of repose, or also known as the critical angle of repose, of a granular material is the steepest angle of descent or diff relative to the horizontal plane to which a material can be piled without slumping. At this angle, the material on the slope face is on the verge of sliding. The angle proposed can range from 0 degree to 90 degree. The morphology of the material affects the angle proposed. Smooth, rounded sand grains cannot be piled as steeply as can rough. Interlocking sands. The angle proposed can also be affected by additions of solvents. If a small amount of water is able to bridge the gaps between particles, electrostatic attraction of the water to mineral surfaces will be increased, the angle of repose, and related quantities such as the soil strength. Now, there are numerous methods of measuring the angle of repose. In each procedure, slightly different results. Results are also sensitive to the exact methodology of experimenter as a result Data from different labs are not always comparable. One method is the traxial shear test, another is the direct shear test. Now, there are three methods of determining the angle of repose. Number one is tilting box method. Number two, fixed funnel method. And lastly, number three, revolving cylinder method. Shift cargo liquefies when excessive dynamic loading induced by rough seas in vessel vibrations is transmitted to the cargo. Before I start with cargo work, hazards, precautions, and procedures, I should introduce to you some essential information and definitions. Number one is flow moisture point, percentage moisture content at which a flow state develops under a prescribed method of test. Number two, flow state. It is when a granular mass is saturated with liquid to an extent that under the influence of external forces like vibration, impaction, or ship's motion, it loses its internal shear strength and behaves as a liquid. Number 3. Moisture content. It is the water, ice, or other liquid contained in a water mass, sampled and expressed as a percentage of the total mass. Number 4. Moisture migration. It is the movement of moisture in a cargo by settling and consolidation due to the vibration in ship's motion. Water is progressively displaced which may result in some portions or all of the cargo developing a flow state. And lastly, number 5, transportable moisture limit. It is the usually 90% of the flow moisture point in the maximum moisture content of a concentrate considered safe for carriage by a general cargo vessel. Now, cargos will likely liquefy when there is concentration in material sulfides, there are fish in bulk, coal in fine particles or coal slurry such as size less than 1 mm, coke breeze, coal drift, small coal, and scale dust from industrial chimneys. The cause of moisture for bulk cargos are water, which is found in raw materials as mined in due to manufacturing process. Rain, snow, ice exposure, stockpiling, and wet ground. Despite the test to determine the moisture content, 
it is best if the moisture is in a dope due to the appearance and condition of cargo. Cargo hazards may occur if the moisture content is greater than transportable moisture limit. Shift of cargo can occur as a result of liquefaction. Such cargoes may appear to be in a relatively dry granular state when loaded and yet contain sufficient moisture to become fluid due to compaction and vibration during the voyage. In fluid state, cargoes may flow to one side due to a roll that may not completely return back with the opposite roll. This may progressively lead to a dangerous heel in capsize. And lastly is the oxidation. For precautions, cargo must be reasonably trimmed on completion of loading in respective of the stated angle of repose. Ships which are not specifically fitted or constructed should carry only those cargoes which have a moisture content less than or equal to transportable moisture limit. Cargoes containing liquid should not be stowed in some space. Adequate precautions to main weather tightness to prevent sea water entry may also lead to corrosion of hull machinery. Water should not be used at the sea to cool the cargo, especially lift-fitted cargo ships. These have portable divisions and can carry cargo with moisture content greater than transportable moisture limit. Now let us proceed to the temperature, toxic gases, oxygen depletion, and humidity monitoring. Ventilation for our proceeding, let us understand some basics. The dew point is the temperature to which air must be cold to become saturated with the water vapor. When cold further, the airborne water vapor will condense to form liquid water, called dew. When air cools to its dew point through contact with a surface that is colder than the air, water will condense on the surface. Now because of the dew point, it creates a water droplet called the ship's width. An example here is when we enter the cold area, where we have a cold air outside the ship, while it is warm inside, and the cargo with a dew point of 23 degrees Celsius, and also we have a cold water, it will start to cold the ship's hull, which creates ship wet. Another example is when we enter a warm area, which we are in a warm region, such as in China or in Philippines, while our ship have a cold air, especially in cargo region. We have warm water and warm air outside the ship, where it can warm the ship's hull. It is important not to instantly or quickly release the ventilation because when the warm air will contact to the cold air inside the ship, it will create a ship wet which can liquefy the cargoes. In our conclusion, we should always remember the phrase cold to hot ventilate na. Because its reason was to avoid ship wet or water droplets that can liquefy our cargo and create moisture inside the ship. Especially when in contact with the dew point. That's why we should always remember that when cold air and hot air interact each other, it creates a dew point and produces a rel relatively high level of water vapor in the atmosphere, creating a water sweat or a ship sweat.